Welcome to the Build Your Beautiful Business Podcast with your host, Julie C. Butler. If you're looking to build the business of your dreams, then this is the space you want to be in. Join Julie as she talks about ways that you can successfully scale your profitable dream business, one that will give you ultimate time freedom and the abundant lifestyle you deserve. Julie will take you by the hand, sharing with you her business savvy strategies as she chats it up with her favorite online entrepreneurs. You'll get a weekly dose of boosted confidence as you learn as they reveal their inside tips and tools that you need to start building a profitable dream business of your own, one that you'll love and that works for you on autopilot. Welcome back to the show. Today, we have a special guest with us, a friend of mine and an amazing human, Lindsay Maloney. Lindsay is a business coach, host of the top rated podcast, Book Your Dream Clients, and a homeschooling mom of three. Lindsay helps women coaches create six-figure businesses by building out their signature offers and designing dreamy client packages without the busy work. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Build Your Beautiful Business Podcast. I'm your host, Julie C. Butler. And today I have a special guest with me. I have Lindsay Maloney. Welcome, Lindsay. Hey, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. Today is a special, special episode because Lindsay is actually my first, my very first guest expert that I am interviewing on the podcast. Which is like so crazy because I feel like We've known each other for years, so this is going to be the easiest interview ever for you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know. And Lindsay and I go a little a little way back, not way back, but a little way back. I I found Lindsay about four years ago, right? Four, yeah. yes, because Soka's four years old. It's five. Five. I think, yeah. It's what? Just, I think so, like the, this year, but I think you found me a year into it. Yeah. So about four no, years. No, I found. Well, I found you when you were launching Love to Launch. Yes, you did. You did. Yes. We have to look back in the archives for that. I know. I know. (laughs) We have to. We have to. So I found Lindsay through Pinterest. So Pinterest works. um, And I joined her challenge and I came into her world and I love Lindsay's energy so much. And the one thing I love most about you is that you're, first of all, you're, you're just so incredible as a human, but you're so positive and you always look for the positive in every situation. And so I always find myself, well, not always, but oftentimes I'll find myself, what was Lindsay do? (laughs) (laughs) So Um, Today, I'm excited because we're going to talk about being addicted to checking all the boxes in your business and how to avoid that. And I think it's so important. And it's a, it's a, I think a great topic. Well, I think we can both relate to it. So there's going to be a lot of experience inside this conversation for sure. Yeah. (laughs) A lot of, a little bit of going back and forth. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And I love, what I love about these conversations is that we can truly be uh, transparent and candid about our experiences. And so that listeners can learn through our, our, the things that we've gone through and, and our lessons and everything. Yeah. It's important to show the realness, like no one's perfect. It hasn't, it's not always sunshine and rainbows. And Mm -hmm. the more you talk about your story, the more people can feel like it's okay for them to, to live their own story too. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love the most about, um, about mentors or, or people that inspire me and stuff like that is, is their stories that they share about the different things that they've struggled with or, or uh, learned in their business so that we can relate, right. And know that, okay, like it's not, doesn't, everything doesn't have to be perfect. Right. No, and it's not, it's never going to be. So we can let go of that now. Mm -hmm. So as someone who was checking all the boxes and doing things by the book, when you started your business, you absolutely know what it's like being addicted to the right decision and not allowing yourself to trust your intuition and build a business your way, right? So 
I know that today's listeners will walk away with a solid understanding of what it's like to build a business they actually love and what works for them. And truly, I'm excited about this conversation because I'm always I'm always all about just being your authentic self. So this is so perfect. But before we start, Lindsay, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey to where you are now. Well, we go way back at Mm -hmm. at least 10 years ago. I started out as a health coach. Uh, I lost 90 pounds after having my first baby. He is going to be 14 in October. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Yeah. What? I don't know if that, that seems, that seems false, but it's true. But he, he's like always been teaching me lessons. And when he was born, I, I realized, you know, like I can actually tap it into how I want to feel better. And I just, I realized that, you know, I don't feel myself. I, I feel like I could, I feel like I could be better. So I just, you know, I just worked on myself. Uh, that was it. I had no, I, there was no Instagram back then. I, you couldn't even have Pinterest. I, I just did it on my own. And then I started, you know, sharing on Facebook. I remember Mm -hmm. posting like my first like selfie in my dark workout room and people who knew me in real life were like, oh my gosh, like you've, you've changed so much. And then people started to ask me how I did it. And I started to realize that I really enjoy showing people how to feel better about themselves and how to, how to live better because this feels so good. And I started to learn more about it. And I created this health coaching business where I actually worked with people um, at my home um, for a couple of years. And I just kind of soaked it all in. Like I, I absorbed all, all things health and I, I loved it. I still do. Um, But then after Gracie was born, she is going to be nine in a couple of months. And I like, I keep getting ideas for her birthday list on my phone all the time. So she's not going (laughs) to let me forget, but I, I kind of stepped away after I had her. I didn't, I just wanted to like take care of my daughter and my son and just kind of live the mom life. And then I remember realizing in a waiting room at a doctor's office, I kind of missed Instagram because I deleted everything. I deleted Facebook, like I deactivated everything. So I downloaded it again and I kind of fell back in love with health coaching and I wanted to be back into that world. And so I started health coaching again. I did a new website and did all the things. And then I thought, well, if I really want this to be a business, I should learn how to run a health coaching business online because it was a totally different story from when I first started. Mm-hmm. And so I took a business course and I it was like a 30 day program it was $250. It was going to teach me how to like get my health coaching business and 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 have all these clients and, you know, live the dream. And I finished it in two weeks. But then I was like, oh my gosh, I love the business side of it. It was, it was so fun for me. And I have a business degree. I was always playing office when I was little. Like I, why, why not like bring that fantasy into my life? So I erased the health coaching side and I went full into business coaching. And I've been doing that for many years. You can do the math, but I just, I, I love helping people create something out of an idea. I love helping coaches who don't have anything online yet. And I love helping coaches scale what they have. It's just a huge passion of mine and, and getting to know all these women from all over the world. I don't work with a particular coach. I work with all coaches and it's one of the, one of the many reasons why I'm excited to wake up every morning. That's amazing. And I also, I want to let the listeners know that you do this as an introvert as a mom of three, you have a full-time job and you homeschool your children, right? Yes. I have a lot of blessings on my plate. <laughs> yes. Blessings. But you, and you still manage to have a six-figure business because you have created systems in your business that allow you to do this. And when you do work on your business, you 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 focus on the tasks and you get it done, Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, when I started, I had kids who napped and that was like golden time when they're napping or I did have kids in school for a couple of years. I I, I probably got more done during nap times because I knew this is full focus because once they're up, they're going to, they're going to be hungry. They're going to need me. I need to be mom. And so I just learned that that little time that I have is going to have to be really productive. And I kind of don't want to ever work on my business eight hours a day anyway, because that's not, I didn't, I don't want to create another job for myself. 
So I thought, well, if I, if I can manage, you know, running a business with a couple hours a day, then I think that's, that's a pretty nice goal to have. So I always started with that intention and no one naps anymore. I mean, it'd be nice (laughs) for me to get a nap, but no one naps anymore, but I do, I do, I don't go and work on my business, um, after hours. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. I just, I I have a well-oiled machine because it was very intentional in building that. Amazing. I love that. And, um, I love that because you're you're able to build your business around your life and that's what we all want, right? So let's dive in. I want to talk about, so why do you think that checking all the boxes when we're building a coaching business can be a trap? Well, first of all, I, I like to look at it this way. I like to look at it as a recipe. And I used to be terrible at following recipes, but then, so like we want to make like a loaf of bread, for example. You can't just, okay, I'll just throw whatever I want together and hope for the best, right? But that's kind of how I used to bake and how I used to cook. Like, I'm not going to follow these instructions. Like, that's boring. I don't want to do that. I want to do it myself. And it would never really turn out. And so when I approach my business, the opposite, if I do everything this course creator tells me to do, then I will get this result. It never works that way either. So I was like confused. How come I do, if I do everything they tell me to do, how come I don't get the results that they have? And so everyone goes through that cycle, right? You've you've done the courses, you've done all the things, like you followed it to the T, but yet how come I don't have the same life she does? Because the end result is different in business than in real life. Like in real life, if you want to bake a loaf of bread, you have to follow the steps. You have to weigh it out. Like then it'll turn out, but not in business. It's opposite. So I decided, oh, I'm gonna take that mindset towards baking. I probably should follow instructions there because what I'm doing isn't working. And then I need to be more willy-nilly with my business here. So yes, you can cross off all the things in your in your business. You can follow the programs and I recommend you do. But then you have it's like the letting go part. Like mm-hmm. you can follow everything that I've done to get to where I am. You're not gonna have the same outcome as me you might have a better outcome actually, because your circumstances are different. Your starting point is different. My starting point is completely unique to yours. Everything is unique. Every starting point is unique. And no one like talks about that because it's not like a, a sexy sales thing. Like you're not going to have the same results as me, but you should still give me a thousand dollars to take my Mm -hmm. course. Like, you know, like that doesn't sound very fun. So we go into all these courses with all these expectations of I see her results and we tie ourselves to it because it's something that we can see. Like we wrap it around. This should apply to me. Well, when it doesn't happen, you're like, well, I either did something wrong or I need to go find something else. It's almost like an addicted feeling of checking the boxes. We're addicted to productivity, but we're not, we're not addicted to the result because we've never seen the result yet. So we just keep on going down the list. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and I think also when we do follow and go down the checklist, right, we find ourselves out of alignment because we're not following our, we're not going the way of our true self, right? Don't you find that sometimes, and that can be, it can be um, bad for us because then this is where we get in our heads, we get stuck in our minds, we get, uh, we procrastinate, right? And we get stuck and we don't move forward, right? Well, and it's so true. And when you have a family looking at you, knowing that, you know, she's working on her business and they see the action, you know, with their eyes that, okay, she's in front of her computer. They only tie that to the result as well they don't see the work that you do when you're doing the dishes in your mind or the things that you're coming up with when you're not in front of the screen. And so it's almost like you're trying to prove to everybody that you are working on your business and I'm here. Do you see me? Mm -hmm. I'm here, right? With your phone or your computer and everyone ties up like the visuals. And so if you're not physically checking boxes and reading and doing all the things that you're, you're in your course or whatever you're doing, you feel like you're not doing anything. And so you just kind of get on that hamster wheel of, of, of doing 
whatever someone tells you to do. And then you burn out because you're like, I've done everything. And then you get to the point where you're thinking, if I don't, if I take another course, then that means I'm gonna have to redo everything that I already did. And so you either end up in that trap and you start from scratch. And I see so many coaches who have established businesses and they have something going, but they're not willing to like, let go and see what happens. It's almost the the analogy of teaching your kid to ride bike. If they want to ride bike, my kids don't want to ride bike, but okay. So they want to learn how to ride bike and then you got to let go and let them figure it out. Right. But being addicted to the checking of the boxes is no, I need somebody to hold on to me forever. And I'm not going to try it myself and see, maybe you'll wipe out. Maybe you'll get it right away. I don't know, but no one wants to like feel what it's like to be free with their business. They're almost okay with being tied down of being told what to do. Like they go into employee mode and they don't go into leader mode Mm -hmm. and you have to be both. You can't be full student as you run a business like that. That's not going to bring you any, no one wants to be a client of yours, a student of yours, because you're really good at taking notes and writing lists. People want to be in your world because you're a leader and pure and simple. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about um, letting go in that. So in the sense that, you know, like we join programs and I know I've been caught in this hamster wheel before we, we join a program, we do all the things, we go down the list, we check and we, we get when we don't get the results that we're hoping for right away, we get into that shiny object syndrome, right? Like we go, okay, like, okay, maybe this next course is going to give me the results that I want and, or, and then they don't happen. And then you find yourself getting, okay, maybe this course is going to get me the results that I want. And next thing you know, 10 courses later, right? When really, I think that the missing link is really we have to give it time. We have to let go. I think we have to let go of the results and know that the universe is going to provide with us right at that same time. And so I think that we can definitely also get caught up in the, we have to trust the process and the journey, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And like, that sounds all fun. And, but people are like, yeah, I know, but I, I want to see something here, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you have to dig deeper than trusting the process. You have to meet people where they are and you have to say what you're doing when you sign up for a program and when you do anything in your business, you have to take your, you have to continue to hold on to your own power. You cannot give your power away to somebody and only allow you to feel like you're making progress by seeing dollar signs in your business. You are making progress. You're always making progress. So if if you show up online in a way that makes people feel like, oh, she's doing this out of obligation. People, people feel that like, I, I, I can feel that stuff. But if you show up in a way that you're like, I don't care what happens. I know that I'm supposed to say this. I know I'm supposed to do this. People love that because you, you inspire people. We have to stop giving our power away to random strangers on the internet, whether they're your course creator or it's a client or whatever. We have to stop doing that because you're always going to be down here. If you take your power back and you operate your business in that leadership position, then people will just want to be in your space. They can't explain why they just need to be around you. Your, your voice does something to them. Like you, they just need to be around you and it's unexplainable. That's Mm -hmm. what leaders do. But you can, we have to stop thing, giving this, putting the responsibility on everyone else for to make us happy. It's not re- my responsibility to make you happy, Julie. It's not my responsibility to make my clients happy. No one. I can make myself happy. Thank you very much. And I'm not going to let somebody else control how I feel about myself, much less my business. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I think we don't realize we're doing this, but we are like, I did it. I got caught in that trap where I was looking to all the people and all of the different ways they were doing things. And I got myself, I caught myself comparing, right. And that also can be, that can be bad because again, you get stuck, you get, you procrastinate, you get in your head and you know, you don't allow yourself to move forward in a way that you are meant to. And so what happened is that when I realized that this is what was happening to me in my business, 
I started being very conscious of content consumption, right? Like I started unscribing from email lists I didn't need to be on. I started, you know, like being conscious of the time I spend on social media, sometimes even on unfollowing accounts that really didn't pertain to what, because I wanted to really focus on my own business the way that I wanted to show up, right? The mm-hmm. way I wanted to do things, not the way other people were doing things, but the thing, the way that that things felt aligned for me moving forward into my business. Well, it's and, unfair to do it the other way around. So mm-hmm. it's so unfair. And I don't know why we think it's a when you when you get into that state, like for me, I feel like I'm in panic mode. Like my heart is beating fast and you start to just, what's she doing? I'll download this. I'll download this. I'll download this. And I think, what if your client, just think about this. What if your client would walk in, would they be like, that's what you do when you're not, when you're not coaching, that's what you do. That's where you look to really like, I'm surprised she does that. I'm surprised she has, she subscribes to that feeling. And it's like, what would you do? Be conscious of that when you're standing in your kitchen. How are you? How are you? Who are you being? If your client walked in, would they be impressed or would they be like, yikes, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm kind of surprised she acts that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it all matters. It doesn't just who you are on when you post or when you're on zoom that matters, but what matters more is who are you off of all, off of all of that, that matters more. Mm -hmm. And I know like some of us can be so hard on ourselves, right? Like, but instead we should embrace how far we have come, right? Like if we look back at like six months ago and look at ourselves now, like we should be so proud of ourselves no matter where we are, even if it's not where you want it to be, where you want to be or where you thought you should be. We should be so proud of the accomplishments that we've, uh, like that we've um, have, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we grow so much, but like Mm -hmm. you can stunt your growth by being in overconsumption mode and student mode, hundred percent student mode. You have to be both. Uh, you can, you can look back and say, I have not changed. That is possible. Mm -hmm. So do you want to look back and say, I haven't changed it at all for the better? (laughs) Like I'm still that person. Or you can say today is the day that I make a difference with how I show up online, with how much I consume and how much I take action. Like you can, you have the power to change that. It's not like, oh no, you've come so far. Well, no, maybe you haven't. And maybe you need to take a look and like take some responsibility and say, if you look back at your posts six months ago, are you like, uh, that's not me anymore. I I can do better. Or you, Or is it I haven't posted in six months because I'm so in my head, you know, like mm-hmm. there is, there is two sides of it. I love that. So I know we talked a little bit about letting go, but how do we let go and truly build a business that we actually love and enjoy? Yeah, that's so hard when you think mm-hmm. about it. It's like, well, how do I know what I'm going to enjoy and how do I know what's going to make me happy if I don't have it yet? You know, and then, and there's the problem. You are waiting to be happy and you are tying all of your success into happiness and you are waiting to be happy when something else happens, but it really, you know, you can have if let's for, for example, you think I'll be happy when all of my debts are paid and I'll be happy when I'm making five figure months. Well, okay. That time between here today, when you're saying that, and when that happens, you're going to feel the same way you do today mm-hmm. because all of your, all of your stuff, all of your crap, it's going to follow you. The more money you have, the more success you have only amplifies what you are feeling right now. You have to be, you have to decide to be happy now because wouldn't you rather go along this ride feeling happy until you get to those little monumental moments? Wouldn't you rather just be happy now? Or do you want to like drag, drag yourself out of bed and be miserable until someone on the internet decides to give you money? Like, are we really that shallow? So we have to do the things that make us happy right now. What do you want your business to look like? Let's say, you know, you had a hundred students join in the next year in your business. You know, what does that mean for you? Do you need to clean your business up a little bit? Do you need to tighten things up? Do you need to, uh, 
change how you how you show up? Do you need to change how you are in real in in, in real life? And, you know, as your responsibilities in your family, whatever. Like, what do you? What could you really improve now? And slowly build on that. Start stacking. Start stacking things up. Mm-hmm. Uh, being being somebody who you know you will be when that happens. Why not just be that person now? Wouldn't that be a whole lot easier? And wouldn't you agree, Lindsay, that we when we become that person? when we become the version of who we want to be, when we think we're going to be, when we have those things, things change, like Mm -hmm. things start happening, doors open, opportunities come our way. And we just, it's, it's a game changer and it can truly change your life and your business. When you become that person that you think you want to be now today. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm not saying like that we, we need to go and be that person when we wake up tomorrow, we can make small little changes every day, like a compound effect, right? Mm -hmm. To get Mm -hmm. ourselves to that happy place, even though, you know, you're not making, you know, whatever that number looks like for you, if you want to make $2,000, or if you want to make $10,000, even though that $10,000 is not knocking on your door yet, you should feel the feels of, of when that happens now. Right. Mm -hmm. And I find that when we get into that zone and we start feeling the feels and we start, you know, being happy, like, like as if it had already happened, that's when the magic truly happens. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I think like, I I always have to do analogies because it helps me see it. And I think, okay, when you're dating somebody, like we haven't dated in a long time, right, Julie? Yeah. (laughs) But if you were dating, when you're dating your husband, we're like, I'll be happy when we're married. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, he's not going to want to marry. He's be like, well, I don't want, I don't want more of that. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Why not? You have like, that's why people get married. That's why they want to spend the rest of their lives with each other because they, you just make them so happy and you make, you make them feel something different. And so your business is something you're choosing to have in your life for, you know, you don't have an end date on it probably. So why not operate in that mode now? And and it's hard to do that because the problem with, you know, okay, that's all so fun. I'm going to be happy. Yay. But when you think about it, your, your mind goes to a place where your mind needs familiarity. Your mind needs something it's already seen before in order to get Mm -hmm. there. So the reason why so many coaches crash and burn when they have like their one hit wonder, those one hit wonder coaches, this happens because your mind is like, well, I've never had a $10,000 a month before self-sabotage. I'm doing something wrong. And you go right back to where you were. Your mind wants familiarity. So, you know, it feels really familiar to us, fear, being scared, being stressed out, being overwhelmed, being in panic mode. The reason why you go back to student mode, the reason why you go back to checking all the box mode is because you've done it before. You know how to do that really well. So you always go back there. And it's comfortable. It's so comfortable. It's not comfortable to step out and be a leader. Mm -hmm. It's not comfortable to do all of that stuff because you've never done it before. So like Julie said, stacking on those things, that compound effect of, I need to start acting as if now. Because once I get there, it's not going to feel so scary because I've already, I have, I have, I've done the work I've, Mm -hmm. because you're never going to like, oh, I've made it. And now everything falls into place. It's always going to be amplified all all the time. So you Mm -hmm. need to be responsible. You need to carry yourself in a, in a, you have to have high standards for yourself at all times, not just when things happen for you period, because otherwise you grow, but it's going to be really slow or you won't grow. I mean, I'd rather just grow and be happy at the same time. I agree. Same. <laughs> yeah, I-, I love it. And we we should all be so happy and we deserve it, right? Yeah. And business is meant to be fun anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? I, well, we, we created it. Nobody's forcing us to do this. Right. You know, we could yeah. be doing a lot of other things right now, but this this feeds our soul. Like, we love doing this. Yes. Yes. You know, so why not make it enjoyable? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll find myself, I'll be sitting there and I actually say it to myself, like, I am so happy. Like, Mm -hmm. I love my life. I am happy. Like, things aren't perfect, 
mm-hmm. right? But I love my life. I love what I've created. I love where I where I've come so far. Am I where I want to be? Not yet. Does it matter? No, I trust the process. I trust that the universe is going to open the doors and the opportunities are going to come my way, the the right people and everything. It's just going to fall into place, but I'm happy today. I'm excited today Mm -hmm. of what the future holds. Okay, so how to start building out an offer suite that supports your lifestyle and honors your priorities. So this this is like an exciting thing, right? Yeah, well you know, your offer suite, whatever you have, the way you build your business financially, Mm -hmm. it really has to align with your definition of freedom. Cause I think we don't sign up for this so we can be tied in front of our laptops for the rest of our days. No, that's not why. Right. So my, my idea of freedom is different from yours. And so you have to define that for yourself. How, how much do you want to be here? Like on a zoom call, for example, like I just wrote a post today about, You can create a coaching business, you know, where you, your address is zoom, or you can do it differently. Like there's so many ways to do it and there's not one right or wrong way. And that gets tricky when you're like, well, I don't know, because I don't, I've never, I've never done any of this before. And that means you just got to start trying. So launching a program, launching your, your client packages, um, doing little tiny offers, little things like that. And kind of feeling it out a little bit. Like you have to decide what you like. I was think if you have a, a a board of all these different foods, which ones do you like? Which ones do you want in your life more? Which ones are you like, I don't want that in my life that I can only have a little bit of this. If I have too much of it, it's, it's too much for me. I know my limits. I know what makes me happy. And I know when I I'm hitting like the red flag moments, right? And it's always going to be different. That's why I don't like to say like, you need to have this, 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 and this, because there is no recipe for it. Mm -hmm. It goes back to what we're talking at the beginning. There is no recipe for this. You have to try. You have to try all the things. This works for me. This doesn't. And you either throw it in the garbage or you're like, I want more of this. And you add more to it and give yourself permission to change it. Yes. As your family grows, as your, your time changes, you have to change. You cannot do everything the same all the time. Give yourself permission to change, delete, move, find and replace whatever you need to do in order to keep your business going in a way again that makes you happy. It's going to be it's going to be completely custom to who what you want. And the only way you're really going to know that is by doing it and then surrounding yourself with people who are doing things that you're like, I kind of like what she's doing. I want to know how she's doing it. Work with that person look to them as for mentorship, whatever it is, and kind of model test. Do you like it? No, then try something else. That's what it all is testing. Mm -hmm. Always testing. I love that. I love that. And you know, I, I want to comment on that because I loved the way you were doing things. And so I hired you as a coach first, and then I joined your amazing program, Santa Coaching Academy, that taught me so much, but only also I have the program that I have today because of because I joined Standout Coaching Academy. But not just that, then I loved being in your world. So I hired you again so that you could help me build out my my program. And so what I love about that is that I f- like I loved how you were doing things. And so I joined your program. But then once I had my program and it's almost two and a half years old now, right? Like I've changed things. I made things like I julified it, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? And I made things, but also I tried doing one-on-one coaching. I found that it wasn't for me. I much rather create, I'm an artist and I'm a creator. I much rather create templates so that I can sell Mm -hmm. on the back end. I, I'm a nerd. I'm a tech nerd and I love doing the back end tech. And so I, I don't want to be um, doing one-on-one coaching. I, so I discovered that because I tried it, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and I tried like a, a membership and I tried, so I tried all of these different things. It wasn't overnight. I tried these things over the span of three or four years, right? Mm-hmm. And now I'm finally at a place where I'm finding myself saying, Julie, what do I want? What do I love? I want to sell my program. I want to sell my templates. 
I don't want to do one-on-one coaching and voila, right? Mm -hmm. Am I going to explore with other things? Probably because that's who we are, right? Mm -hmm. As entrepreneurs. And so there's no right or wrong way of doing this. We, we just, we have the permission to try doing the things, try doing the different things, doing them our way or, and then like you said, if in six months from now, you want to change the way you do things or the support that's included in your program or in your course or whatever the case might be, we are allowed, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And I, I was so afraid to make changes because I was like, well, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to, I don't want to make anyone mad. And it's like, but Lindsay, you're, you're really actually pretty, you're kind of miserable. You need it. You need to make changes before mm-hmm. it all just, you know, it, before it's obvious to people, you know, And it's so hard to do that, especially when, you know, you've been doing something for a long time and you're like, that's what I, that's what it's known for or whatever it is. But it's like, but what if this, what if this change that you make is going to help one of your students make a change that they've been afraid to do, you know? And, you know, I've watched you, Julie, since we first met and I was like, I could tell Julie, you know, you should do this. And she did it. Like she figured it out. The people have it's like you weren't born and you didn't, you didn't know how to do this when you were born. You didn't know Mm -hmm. how to do any of this 20 years ago, but you figured it out. Like if I give you a mission, you figure it out. And I think that is so such an important trait to have like that. Everything is figure outable attitude. Like I can do this. I will figure it out. Watch me. And you've always had that attitude. And I seen you do all the things I've seen you do this. I've seen you evolve. You are definitely like, like you say, you're like you're the you're everyone's business bestie, right? Because you are. You're always rooting for people. You're always there to support people. Like that, you found your groove. You found it. But I don't think you would have been able to find it if you wouldn't have been like, I'm gonna give myself a chance. Tra- I'm gonna give myself a chance, and I'm gonna try. So many people won't give themselves a chance, mm-hmm. and they'll stick to the list. I'm going. I'm gonna be in Sound Out Coaching Academy for five years, and I'm gonna be a student. Like get out and go do something. Mm -hmm. You cannot just sit and be a student. You have to do something. You should always be a student. But if you're in the coaching world, you're in the entrepreneur world, you have to also be that person who takes action. You cannot just be the student. No one wants to work with somebody who is in full student mode. And you always, you're always in student mode, but you're always in entrepreneur mode. And that's why you are where you are today. Mm -hmm. And I love that because I think we can always learn and we can always be better and we can always do things better. And so it's important to always, you know, um, develop different skills moving forward into our businesses as we grow as humans, right? Like, Mm -hmm. because what we needed six months ago, two, three, four years ago was different from what I need now, right? And what you need now. And so it's important to, um, to recognize that and to go for the things that we are ready for now at the level that we're at. Right. And that's different for everybody. Yeah. And it's always going to change and no no space changes faster than ours does. Like it's, there's something new Mm -hmm. all the time, but the tried and true things of, you know, showing up, being consistent, being yourself, that's never going to change. No, it's never going to change. So it doesn't matter if reels are the number one thing to do, or this is important to do on Pinterest, whatever, like all that stuff is always going to be changing every two seconds, but people will stay in your world. If they can count on you to be consistent, that makes people feel good. So I'd rather just do that. I mean, your your business is, I think you're going to fine tune things and you're going to, you're going to make things better but you're never going to improve if you don't do something. You can't improve something mm-hmm. that's not been done. So you have actually have to do something. Please, yeah. please do something. Just one thing today that will push your business forward. Um, it makes me sad to see when people join my programs and they stay, they stay in the program and I don't see them do anything. Like that makes me so sad. Like you should be able to join my program and start doing something today. Mm-hmm. And I'm not joking. Please don't sit on it. It's, just do something. I mean, it's like He's, signing up for a workout program yeah, and not doing anything. Like what's the point then? Yeah. And I mean, most programs have been created because we've gone through the process ourselves, right? And we've mm-hmm. gotten to the results that we get because 
like chances are because of what we teach in our programs is the reason why we are where we are today. So, so when we do join the programs from whoever is the creator is that if you do the work and if you show up and you take the actions, you can get similar or different or your own version of results of whatever program you're taking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's all in discernment. Um, are you joining the program because you're hoping for this to be the answer to all your prayers? Or are you joining a program because you want to learn a new skill to help your business? Like, mm-hmm. like take ownership of your business and be like, is this program going to help me make my business better? Or is this, am I taking a risk of going back into full student mode and not doing anything again? Like, why am I joining this program? Really? Like, what is the reason behind this? sleep on it. And in the morning, you'll know, you'll, you'll know if it's the right thing to do. Well, that's, that kind of ties into the, my next question. <laughs> How do you start trusting yourself and tune into your intuition? Mm-hmm. Well, I think we all have our own little ways of knowing if something is, is the mm-hmm. right thing to do me. It's how am I going to feel in the morning? I, I mean, we can get really worked up about like at night, you might see something on Instagram. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I need this. Like this would help me. This would be the answer to everything in my business. And then when you wake up in the morning, are you like, what was I thinking? Or (laughs) yeah, that's what I need. You know, there's, it takes me a lot. It takes a lot for me to want to know if I'm going to do something in my business. Like I, I have to take my time because I'm a very impulsive person. And so I have, I know like, yeah, Lindsay, 9 9 PM, Lindsay might really think she needs this, but 7 AM. Lindsay might say, no, like it's two different people. Right. So Mm -hmm. you have to, you have to know yourself. There's no, like at three o'clock, you will know all the answers. You have to know yourself. Um, are you more impulsive during this time of year or day? Um, is this, is this really going to help you or is this going to like put you back into, you know, hiding, hiding again? Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be in hiding. I want you to be like, you know, sharpen your skills. You probably know what to do. Right. All the programs out there, you probably know all that stuff. What is it really going to help you do? Is there a better way you could be spending your money? Is there a better way that you can that you can make a change? Can you actually figure this out yourself? Would you get more satisfaction doing it yourself? Is this a quick fix? Is this a sugar fix? There's so many questions to ask yourself, and it's you being responsible about what you're what you're investing in. Mm -hmm. And I think also knowing ourselves and knowing how we make decisions, right? Like for me, I'm I'm a generator and I know that my intuition and my heart is usually how I know if something, if I'm meant to do something, take a program or, or even like if I'm meant to do something a certain way in my business, right? Like I listen to my intuition and I've been practicing this for a little bit now. So I know, right. I know, I know how to find the answers within. So it's, I think also trusting ourselves and not getting too much into our heads. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a million ways to grow your business Mm -hmm. today. And I think the reason why we're attracted to different people is because we feel like the way they did it could help us. And that's why we, we lean in a little bit and listen to certain people. And pretty soon you'll start to discover that everyone it's, it's so frustrating. It can be really frustrating because there's so many ways and you're like, well, what's my way? (laughs) <laughs> How come no one will tell me my way? You have to say, you have to define your way. Yes. You're only, you're the only one who's ever going to figure it out. Oh, that's such a disappointing answer, but it's, it's true. <laughs> it is so true. And I can attest to it. Like for reals, like I've tried so hard to like, I, I was getting FOMO from it, you know, trying so hard to, to, you know, figure out whose way I should be doing things until I gave myself permission to do it a la Julie. And mm-hmm. uh, guess what? A la Julie one every time, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) right? Yeah. I mean, I think everyone's afraid to do it their way because Mm -hmm. they don't want to mess up. But I mean, the only fear you have is looking back at other things that have happened to you and you relating to that. But really, you don't really know what's going to happen, whether it doesn't turn out or it does. So Mm -hmm. why not just stop worrying about it? Just do it. I don't think, I don't think we can mess up. Like, yes, okay, we can mess up, but I don't think we can mess up. Like I always, I used to say, you can't say the wrong person. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. 30 seconds of courage. 
get that 30 seconds of courage and go out there and be yourself. Wow. This was such a wonderful, amazing, all the feels conversation. Um, thank you so much, Lindsay, but I know that you have a, um, a special offer for our listeners today. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. And I, I never remember my special offers, Julie. Oh, so I always say meant for more and for more. That's what I have yes. a feeling. I can never remember. I need post because you have so many. <laughs> I do. I always just point them like, just go to my freebie vault and just get whatever or join the club. Yes. Um, but men for more is like my latest, um, creation that I have that's free to, to join. Um, it should cost money, but it doesn't because I just want you to listen and lean into what I have to say. So basically it's five, it's a five day workshop that we did run live. Um, but you are welcome to join and listen to all of the videos that we have. Um, cause they can, they can truly change your business life. I promise you. I promise you, you can binge on them, take one day at a time, whatever it is. And we do have a support group for it. So if you go to my website, you can find the link for men for more under free things. Um, and I also have a ton of workbooks and masterclasses that you can go and listen to and the lots of other ways I can help you in your business. I know. And I, I love like you always over deliver. So this is definitely something juicy that you want to get your hands on. I will definitely include the links in the show notes. Um, and where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? Well, I like connecting with people on Instagram. I'm Lindsay underscore Maloney. I show up on there consistently. It's my mm -hmm. favorite place. Um, I do have a free Facebook group too, but if you want to learn how to get into my world, just go to lindsaymaloney.com and you'll be able to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Plus you have an amazing, beautiful website. So, <laughs> well, thank you, Julie. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thanks for being my first interview. And it was an honor to have you on the on the show. And I know we could have talked about so many different things because you're just truly just such an amazing coach. And I love being in your world. Oh, thank you so much, Julie. That means the world to me. And I'm so happy to be on your show. And if anyone needs anything, you guys have you guys are in good hands in Julie's world. And if you need anything from me, you know where to find me. Amazing. Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Build Your Beautiful Business podcast. If you did, please make sure to subscribe, rate, and review the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Julie's included a link in the shows to make it nice and easy for you. And if you want to create a beautiful, profitable business of your own, make sure to go unlock your access to Julie's six must-have resources for female entrepreneurs. These resources will help you build and grow your business with simplicity and ease. You can find them at juliecbutler.com forward slash freebie vault. We'll see you in the next episode.